Hey Hunters, Halozoo here for another look into the Starfinder 2e playtest stuff. Uh, this time looking at the good old Solarian. Uh, so, as a quick disclaimer, uh, I have not yet gotten a chance to playtest this. Uh, as much as I want to playtest it, I am currently in the process of getting a group together, doing logistics and stuff like that. So, I, I haven't got to playtest it yet. but. I don't think that's going to matter as much for this one, because there's a lot more, uh, let us say, obvious issues here, to say the least. Uh, so, I'm pretty confident in saying some stuff is just bad. Uh, also, as an aside, I will say up front... This is the one class where I will not be running it pure raw for my players uh, whenever we test this. But I will explain which ability and why for those of you who aren't able to guess which one it is. Uh, and I'll talk more about why I would do something that is kind of crazy to think about in a playtest. But if you actually think about it, it's one that makes a lot more sense than it should. Uh, however, anyway, with the Solarian, uh, also another side note, I do not play Pathfinder 2e, but I do play D&D 5e. Uh, I have looked at a lot of Pathfinder 2e stuff. If you haven't seen the Envoy video, I do know about stuff like the Battlecry playtest. I just don't play the game because I kind of prefer how D&D does a lot of stuff. But for Starfinder, I want to give it a chance. Uh, because currently it looks to be probably one of the better sci-fi RPGs to get into uh, for tabletop games, uh, specifically for D&D players, as it seems to be close enough to D&D that, you know, it's not wildly different. It doesn't have wacky dice systems or significantly different ones. It uses the D20 system. Uh, so it looks to be a close enough to D&D experience that is actually decent. Unlike Starfinder 1e, where there's a lot of balance issues, and I mean, granted, this has a lot of balance issues, as, uh, spoiler alert, this class is the least powerful, probably the most underpowered by far, they really undershot this class, at least in the context of Starfinder, where it feels like some of this was balanced with Pathfinder in mind, but then there's stuff that even Pathfinder stuff is better than. As we will get into surprisingly quick. Uh, however, as an additional aside, uh, the lens I am looking at Starfinder 2e from is specifically with the idea that I'm not using Pathfinder content. Uh, or at least very limited use of Pathfinder content. I do not care how it pairs up against Pathfinder classes. I care how this pairs in conjunction with the Starfinder classes and how it fits into the meta. Now, right off the bat, we see Strength is our key attribute. AKA the worst key attribute you could get this time around. It's not Charisma like 1e. It is Strength this time around as... Pretty much all it's used for is heavy armor and melee attacks, but melee attacks don't really do much. Uh, you will get to carry a lot of stuff as a uh, Solarian, so there is that. However, for the most part, strength plays a very limited role in Starfinder, uh, more than likely. I would assume it's going to be way less useful. Uh, you also only have 10 plus con HP, which is above average. However, I do feel like this probably could have been 12 plus con just because it's kind of like, I'd kind of describe it as it feels like it should have it for similar reasons that Barbarian kind of has it where it's like, well, you're a bit squishier than you should be for a melee. But in the context of this system, it's slightly different as it's, yeah, you're all about getting up close and personal to enemies. So and it's not like you have Khan as a main stat, like Soldier does for some reason. Uh, 
you have strength, so you do kind of need as much HP as you can get, because you're also, by default, a melee class, which is really forced a bit more than it should be, though the feats get kind of weird, as we'll see. Uh, otherwise, like, the 10 plus con, it feels reasonable as, like, a first guess, but it does seem like maybe, like, for the primarily melee centric class of starfinder they should probably have 12 plus con just because this is a very different game where ranged attacks are everywhere so having more hp on your melee would probably be a good idea uh they are experts in perception to start off with so they do get to go before a lot of people they are experts in reflex and will which is surprisingly common here uh however you will probably have your con up as a secondary stat so Actually, this does kind of play well because you're probably going to want con as a secondary stat, so reflex and will will suffer a little bit as a result, but through this, you actually get expert in the two defenses you kind of need it in more because dexterity doesn't really play as big of a role, and wisdom is of somewhat more muted usage. Uh, for skills, you get Athletics by default, along with a Stellar Arrangement skill, and then 3 plus Int skills. Uh, so pretty much you'll have 5, or actually not 5, uh, 7 skills by default, which isn't bad, but you don't really have much use for Intelligence and Charisma. Well, that's your dump stat, boys. Uh, you're trained in simple and martial weapons, but as we'll see, this is practically irrelevant in theory. But there, there's an asterisk to that right now that we will talk about. Uh, then they're also trained in up to medium armor, so they don't get heavy armor by default, just up to medium. Which is a choice to say the least. As this means you'll have to invest at least a little bit in decks to start off with. Otherwise, you're not going to have good defenses. Or at least good AC. So, it does end up in a very weird position where, once again, you're melee-centric, yet you're stuck with just up to medium. Uh, in fact, you're the only up to medium class here. Where I think they could maybe give Envoys medium armor too. Just because it feels like... They could maybe use a bit more defenses since they're not really as well developed in other areas. But, oh well. Uh, then we get Stellar Attunement, so you get the Attune action and Attunement Control. So, while exploring, you can choose which state you're in, uh, regardless of Stellar Arrangement. Uh, and then Attune lets you go to your favored attunement regardless uh so it's based on your stellar arrangement so basically attune always goes into a certain mode now which is kind of annoying i'll say not entirely a fan of that mechanic but you can also attune as a free action when rolling initiative and you get to choose which one you start in regardless uh, and attuning will give you, uh, one of, or not one of, all three of these solar manifestations. So we're actually going to start with the solar weapon, which is far and away the best of these. And I'll be blunt, the only good one. So you just get this solar weapon and you get to choose two traits that it has or reach. So reach is just a... It basically takes both choices, which kind of fair, I guess. Uh, and it's also a D8 martial melee weapon that deals either bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage, which you choose when you create it. Uh, it can also be pretty much any type of melee weapon you want. It can be an axe, brawling, club, flail, hammer, knife, pick, polearm, spear, or sword. Uh, regardless of the traits you choose, this does mean you can get a reach brawling weapon. I don't know how that works, but 
it doesn't even have to have the freehand trait. So, yeah. Uh, also, the traits you can give it that uh, are part of the pick two. Disarm, grapple, freehand, parry, non-lethal, shove, sweep, trip, and versatile for some reason. My gripe with versatile is mostly that you can re-manifest your weapon. Where... I mean, you do have to spend 10 minutes to do it, but it does feel like Versatile has a bit more limited usage when you can swap it in other ways, but oh well. Then you also, of course, have the Graviton or Photon attuned traits, so... It's basically something that happens with all of the different uh, Solarian abilities where it has a different effect depending on what you're attuned to. So if you're Graviton attuned, when you strike, they treat all squares adjacent to them as if they were difficult terrain. Basically, a slightly complicated five foot slow. Where also, now it does shut off step by default. But some enemies, this is going to be significantly worse than a slow. But ultimately, it's not half bad. And this happens on any strike. So there is that. Uh, but Photon Attuned, you just add plus half level damage as fire damage. So you just get more damage. Which is definitely potent. Uh, then we'll go on to Solar Nimbus. So, all this does... So, after the amazing, you know, depth of Solar Weapon, where you get to choose all this stuff and customize it, it's always got these bonuses. We have Nim Solar Nimbus, which all it does is give you Nimbus Surge. A reaction for when you take damage from a melee attack. Why the heck does this feel like it was designed for Pathfinder first? Like, I get Solarian wants to be in melee a lot, but... Could they not get something to protect themselves from ranged attacks? And also, could the Nimbus not do literally anything besides this reaction? Could I not, like, get some resistance? Maybe even resistance to damage from ranged attacks so you know maybe it's like oh you resist like four damage from or like you have resist two to damage from ranged attacks that increases like i don't know every four levels or something but anyway, the abilities that Nimbus Surge will do if you're Graviton attuned, they have to make a Fortitude save or be pushed five feet away. So yeah, just casually knock the enemy out of your reach. Okay. Like, it's not terrible, but it's like you have a chance to push him five feet away. And it uses your class DC, too, which we'll talk about. Uh, then we have Photon Attuned, where it takes fire damage equal to half your level, rounded up. So, it's actually pretty decent, because this is out-of-turn damage. So, yeah, that's not half bad. Uh, it'd be nice if Graviton Attuned did something that didn't require a saving throw. But, overall, Nimbus Surge, it's... Not bad. It's nice to have. It's just... It does feel a bit like it needs to interact with ranged attacks somehow. Since one of the Solarian struggles is going to be... You know, you're getting a lot of ranged attacks as you try to charge into melee. But... You don't really have many ways of interacting. And Nimbus Surge is only against melee attacks. So perhaps... You know, resistance to ranged attacks would be nice. Uh, then we have Solar Shot. So, 
Supposedly, this is treated as a martial ranged weapon in the brawling weapon group. When it's really just a crappy version of the kineticist, like, uh, elemental blast type deal. So, essentially, you just have this, like, solar shot action you can make. And you make a range strike against the AC of a creature in range. Uh, you add your strength to the damage roll. And your attunement determines the damage and maximum range. So I tore into this last time, and it turns out it's even worse than I had thought. Because it says maximum range here. This is not a range increment. Oh no, this is the maximum range. So Photon Attuned, it has a 30-foot range. Graviton? Oh boy, it's only got a 15-foot range. And that's all you can reach. Okay. Let me be blunt as hell and just say... That is utter trash. Even for Pathfinder. That is utter trash. Because ultimately... You face the question of... Well, why not just... Take that action to stride... And you might say, well, why not attack? You know, it's an attack. It does damage. It helps you get the enemy killed faster. Well, here's the issue. Ranged strikes use dexterity. This does not use... So you're a strengths class using a dex-based attack. So that makes it less accurate. Then... We also have to consider that you have these items called Solarian Crystals, which are used to buff your solar weapon, basically as if it was an archaic weapon or a Pathfinder weapon where you have these runes you put into it, but it's called Solarian Crystals. They only affect solar weapon. There is no equivalent for solar shot, meaning that you do not add the item bonus of your Solarian Crystal. So that's going to put it up to a minus four penalty. Then, as an ultimate middle finger to Solar Shot, they also give Solar Weapon legendary proficiency at the very end in Solar Paradigm. Not Solar Shot. Just Solar Weapon. Sure, you do get Master at least at the same time, and 19th is the only point in which the Solar Weapon surpasses Solar Shot in proficiency. You still have to keep in mind that at best, you're still going to be minus one behind your strength with your Dexterity, and that's assuming Dexterity was even your like starting at a plus two or plus three because otherwise it's going to be even lower and granted you do probably want a plus one or plus two dexterity so that at least isn't unreasonable but the problem is it's like it goes from you know yeah it starts off at just a minus one but it quickly becomes a minus two and it's only going to get worse. And that's assuming you started with plus three decks for some reason, which I wouldn't really suggest because you really want plus three con instead as a melee character. I get that they didn't want Solarian to be good, but they're like good at ranged attacks, but this is just so bad. Because like what this feels like it should be is it's an, a backup option that has the potential to be built into and do a bit more, which, as we'll see, is a surprising number of feats, unfortunately. But, you know, it's like kind of intended as a backup option, but it's just so bad that you're better off just grabbing a pistol because it's just going to do way more and it's going to have better range. 
And sure, like they have good, you know, you know, unique crit effects like a graviton attuned one. You know, you can make a trip attempt on a crit, which can be pretty cool because you're doing it at a range, which not many weapons get to do. Photon attuned, you do persistent fire damage, which technically is redundant with the flame weapons, but hey, it's fire damage. It does have a level plus four, meaning that it technically does end up with one more dice than solar weapons do, because they only go up to four dice. This can go up to five at the very end of the game. So there is technically that, but it's so inaccurate that the crit effects are irrelevant, where pretty much if you're lucky... A t nat 20 would make your attack a crit, but that's it. So, ultimately, it's just so bad, and that is why I will say this is the one thing I am going to uh, say we're not running rules as written. I should not, like, you shouldn't need to test this to say, yeah, no, this is awful and pretty much useless especially later on to where it's like, I'm going to be up front and say, hey, if you want to play Solarian, I will be running, I will allow you to modify Solar Shot to not be a pile of hot garbage and make it where you could actually use it. Uh, so first off, like the most obvious thing, remove the level plus four scaling and just let it scale with the Solarian Crystal. So the Solarian Crystal now affects Solar Shot and your Solar Weapon instead of having level plus four on Solar Shot. That way, your Solar Shot scales with Solar Weapon, but most of the time it'll actually be a little less effective. Uh, the second thing, instead of using your Strength Mod for the damage roll, Solar Flare is given the Brutal property thus allowing you to use strength instead of dexterity for the attack roll, thus kind of closing the gap in damage, or uh, not damage, but in attack modifier, so both pretty much scale the same in attack modifier, and of course in Solar, uh, solar Paradigm, you actually get uh, Solar Shot proficiency, to legendary as well. Uh, so this way, you know, you're actually able to hit with it, but you do lose the damage. So the solar weapon adds your strength to damage, so it's going to hit harder, but solar shot is going to have the accuracy to actually compensate and make it a decent backup option. Uh, you might add a feat that gives it the propulsive trait, so you add half your strength mod to damage, but the main idea is that it sacrifices the damage boost for just having full accuracy. Then the third change is that the range is going to be increased. Uh, there's multiple ways to do it, but for all, it's just going to be it now uses range increments. So it's 30 foot range. Uh, and then the two possibilities are either just double the range of both. So Graviton gets 30 foot range increments. Photon has 60 foot range increments. Damage is the same. Or maybe put both on 40 foot range increments. And they're both reduced to D6 damage. But now the crit effects and damage types are the things that matter most. Uh, but those are just my possibilities that I'm going to offer... Uh, anyone I run Starfinder 2e for who want to play a Solarian, just so, you know, instead of wasting time with an ability that is basically useless, here's a version that is more functional and see which is more functional and, you know, see what works. Uh, if this, you know, experiment, see if this functions. So then we can say, uh, tell Paizo, hey, we've tried a different version of this. Here's our results. And it's like, oh, you know, we doubled the range on both of these. 
oh, this worked wonderfully, you know. Stuff like that to just give Paizo better data than, yeah, this needs a complete redesign, and instead say, hey, we've tested some possible fixes, here you go. Uh, now, another interesting thing that I've seen pointed out, uh, so also they do get plus two to perception for initiative, which is actually pretty neat uh, that they get that. However, an interesting thing is you get Solarian DC to expert at 13th level. This is actually the slowest class DC progression in the game because it's at 13th and 19th. This is ridiculously slow. And as we'll see, there's actually plenty of stuff that uses class DC. Uh, for example, Graviton Nimbus Surge used it. And then there's... Plenty of other options that use it too, like uh, the initial revelations of two of the uh, arrangements actually use class DC. So it's kind of weird that they have such slow class DC progression, and it definitely seems like it's supposed to be way faster. Uh, also, they only got, go up to master in armor, but... I think this isn't too bad, but maybe this could be increased to Legendary since they're supposed to be melee-based class. Uh, perhaps they get Monk Armor progression, but they start with Medium Armor. That might be another possibility. But anyway, the arrangements... Uh, balanced is... kind of sad right now, but... I mean, they get favored attunement, graviton, and photon, meaning that they just function as you would kind of want them to. There's no annoying things going on where you have to, like, utilize cycle effects just to swap attunement modes. But their abilities are jank, to say the least. Especially because they don't follow the same progression tracks as Degradant or Radiant, which are the Graviton and Photon favoring arrangements that we have. Also, I'd have to say that I kind of wish there was maybe at least two more arrangements to give us alternatives to Degradant and Radiant for each favored. But, oh well. Uh, Balanced starts off with Binaric Assault, which is definitely the worst initial revelation by far. For one, it is... Now, the one thing it does have going for it is it's at will. It does not have a frequency. Uh, it is a flourish, but it also doesn't cycle you. Which is kind of weird, but... It's that is mostly because it works in a very weird way. So, what happens is you make a strike with your solar weapon and a solar shot using your current multi attack penalty and both at the same target. So, this is kind of weird though because solar shot's a ranged attack. So, this probably should have a specific thing of this does not trigger reactions for making ranged attacks. So, if, say, somebody next to you has Reactive Strike uh, and you attempt to use Binaric Assault, you don't get attacked because you're trying to attack them. Uh, and keep in mind that Solar Shot is absolute crap, thus half of this is useless. So it's like, okay, so... Sure, it doesn't get multi-attack penalty, but as you progress, that's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Where you're taking two actions to make two strikes, but one is actually worse. Like, eventually it gets to the point where it's it would be better to just... Oh, I'm just going to strike again because that would be way more accurate than trying to use Solar Shot. 
Uh, but if an attack hits, then you swap your current attunement. So basically you cycle. But if both attacks fail to hit, which uh, is quickly going to become a very big thing of, yeah, no, you do have where, I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed to miss one or like all but guaranteed to miss one while the other is a bit more likely to hit. Uh, where it's kind of a, oh, did the melee attack hit? If yes, okay, you get to swap your two mint stuff. If no, well, it now has the disharmony trait effectively, and you become unattuned. Uh, Ascended Stability, meanwhile, uh, uses reaction whenever you would become unattuned. And it's just, oh... You stay attuned. Okay, that is a reaction, I guess. It's kind of weird because you have quite a few good reactions that you can pick up that are honestly better than this. And you could also just avoid becoming unattuned, especially since you don't even, you're not even guaranteed a disharmony ability. And you're probably not using Binaric Assault by that point, because why would you take that risk? You know, it's better to just keep striking. It's like, if you want to swap, just use the Attune action. It's infinitely better than trying to Binaric Assault. Finally, they get Astrologic Sense, which is a once per 10 minute ability that you get when everyone gets a once per hour ability. Uh, but it's just a normal attuned action. So it's just one action. But uh, basically, if you would take an action that would have a result based on your attunement, you can instead determine both results on either attunement and then decide which one you want to use. So, as a simple explainer, I would imagine it's like, oh, if you solar shot, and assuming the person was in 15 feet, uh, and pretty much exactly 15 feet, because otherwise, like, well, why are not use a reach one? But uh, basically, you could decide, okay, do I want to graviton attune or photon attune? Okay. I would roll the damage and then see which result would do more damage and then decide, oh, you know, I rolled a nat 1 on Graviton because, of course, while Photon, I rolled a nat 6. So it's like, okay, I'll go with Photon. And then it does the Photon effect. It's very jank. And also, this is redundant with a feat later. So it's kind of a, well, you've got this, but now it does something else. Uh, so then we also the skill for balanced because you get an extra skill at first level. Uh, it's either medicine or society, which not bad, I guess. Uh, and that's also the one knowledge skill you'll find here. Uh, neither is in the stat using a stat you really use a lot, but. At least medicine, like, you might want for... Because wisdom is whale powers stat. So, there is that. Degranate is for Graviton. Uh, they use Deception or Intimidation, which is pretty bad for you, actually. Because they're Charisma skills, but Charisma does nothing for you in this version. Because, fun fact, they used to be a Charisma-based class. Though... They still wanted strength and con for stat buffs, but the charisma basis has been cut completely, so which is fair, but in the case of this, it kind of feels like this would be better if you still used charisma, but you're a strength class now. You don't need this. Their initial revelation is black hole, which you can select any number of creatures in 30 feet of you. Uh, it's once per 10 minute cycle ability too. Uh, and they have to make a fort save against your class DC, which 
is unfortunately slow scaling. Yeah, congrats, Paizo. You've kind of sabotaged this once again. Uh, but regardless, on a success, you pull them five feet. Uh, and they take half damage. Crit success, nothing happens. Failure, they take full damage and pulled 15 feet towards you and are knocked prone. While on a crit fail, they're pulled full 30 feet towards you and are knocked prone and take double damage. And at a level plus two, this increases the damage by 1d8. It does start a bit low at as a once per 10 minutes for a d8, but being ally friendly and the pull is more than enough to kind of compensate for the fact that, yeah, no, this is... It's not really doing much damage, but its utility is very powerful. Then, your advanced revelation at 9th level is... Uh, yeah, you just casually get to fly while Graviton tuned. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, this also kind of makes their solar shot pretty much useless, because now you can just fly while Graviton attuned. Meaning, you can just fly up to anyone you want... And you don't even need to worry about ever using Solar Shot, because, well, why would you? They're in flying distance. Then at 15th, you get Singularity, which once per hour with the Disharmony trait, which instantly ends attunement. You can create a black hole in 60 feet. It takes up a 5-foot space. And creatures within the space take 10d8 void damage with a basic reflex save. Against your class DC, which is currently stuck at expert, because yeah. Any creature drops to zero HP by the effect is torn asunder, pulled into the singularity. Uh, so basically, they're disintegrated. Uh, until the end of your next turn, the singularity's area and all adjacent spaces are an area of supernatural darkness that nobody can see through. And creatures beginning their round within the area of the darkness must succeed a fort save or be slowed one for that round. And at level plus two, it increases the damage by 2d8. I will say this is cool in concept, but I would like if this pulled creatures into it. Because right now, it's pretty much just a like single target. Boom, you take a bunch of void damage. But, oh well, it's... You know, it needs some work, but... Otherwise, as a foundation, it's not bad. And these abilities are actually pretty good in concept. It's just... Singularity feels a bit weak, especially because it's void damage. Uh, it would be nice if that did work on Undead, because why would an Undead survive a black hole? It's kind of just... Why? Uh, and it's like, it does feel like... You know, the five-foot space thing is just... A bit underwhelming for what this is supposed to be. I mean, sure, it does a ton of damage... For a once-per-hour ability, but... Could this not, like, pull people in and... Maybe be, like, a five-foot burst that then creates a, like, ten-foot radius, like, and then, like, ten feet beyond that is darkness. And then, like, creatures in 30 feet of it get pulled towards it. Uh, maybe that would certainly be cool. And I, I kind of wanted this to be more like Kineticist stuff, where it's like, oh, here's something really cool that you're doing. Radiant, meanwhile, gets either crafting or diplomacy, because, yeah, you're using the stats for either of those, right? You know, your worst two stat choices? Ah, uh, Paizo. I mean, they're, they're both good skills, it's just, you don't really have the stats for that. Uh, then... Their initial revelation is Supernova, which, similar to Black Hole, two actions, attuned, cycle, Solarian, once per 10 minutes, uh, but this time you have to be photon attuned. And basically, you just create an explosion around you. Uh, 
either 15 feet or 30 feet. And each creature takes D8 fire damage uh, with a fortitude save. And it's D8 if it's 15 feet or 30 feet, it's D6. Now let me point out for a moment that this is actually doing less damage than Black Hole at 30 feet. Even though Black Hole is both, you know, I mean, it's ally friendly, which Supernova isn't. And it's also pulling. Granted, Supernova can blind or dazzle for a round on a failure or success, respectively, and will blind for a minute on a crit fail, which is devastating. Uh, and then this is on a level plus one, not level plus two, which is kind of weird. So this will do way more damage, but it starts off worse than Black Hole, which is kind of weird. But, ah oh well, it is what it is. Uh, Solar Wind, meanwhile, at ninth level, uh, while you're fo photon attuned, you gain plus 10 movement speed and can move through the space of a single unwilling creature each time you stride. So basically, you can move through one creature per turn, or one enemy per turn. So, or actually per stride, which is pretty interesting. It's a bit more niche. Uh, this is definitely, okay, well, Degradant thus far just, yeah, no, it's just infinitely better. But it has uses at least, and it does give you more speed, which can arguably be a bit better sometimes, but that's just the way it is. Then their big ability is Big Bang, which is just a casual big 30-foot radius explosion. Uh, but this one, uh, you can actually save your allies if they're right next to you. And this is a reflex save against your class DC. Uh, however, it does do 10d6 fire damage, so this is going to be useful against most things except fire elementals. Uh, so it does hit a wider array, array of creatures, at least. Uh, but on a fail, they take 2d6 persistent fire damage. Crit fail, 4d6 persistent fire damage. And you can attempt to counteract a spell on the creature uh, with half your level as the counteract rank. That is definitely interesting, but... I don't know, I feel like the magic affecting stuff is kind of underplayed in here, but oh well. It is cool at least, but you know, it's like, it, it is what it is ultimately. Uh, and I will say, I kind of feel like I wish Supernova and Black Hole were just default things that you had, but oh well. Now on to the feats. Oh boy, this is something. So... Right off the bat, we have Meditative Analysis, which is an action uh, that will cycle you to uh, that you make a Recall Knowledge check, and if the check is successful, you gain plus one to your next strike with a solar weapon against the target this round. And if that strike hits, you can choose which attunement benefit you gain for that strike. Uh, then it's immune to Meditative Analysis for a day. So... Yeah, this is just weird. So, why the heck would you want to invest in Recall Knowledge on a Solarian? You're not int-based. You don't have any Recall Knowledge skills. You have no synergy with Recalling Knowledge. It's just here's this random thing that cycles you, that gives you a plus one bonus to your strike if you re successfully Recall Knowledge. Something that's not going to be easy to do because you have so little ability to invest in knowledge skills or uh, knowledge stats in order to make this as effective as it could be. It's not like you're a uh, magus where it's like, yeah, you use intelligence for your spellcasting, so it's more reasonable 
you would actually have a decent, you know, recall knowledge ability. Here, it's like there's nothing else that wants you to recall knowledge. I mean, the only one who gets a recall knowledge skill is balanced, and it's an option with medicine, which is probably just going to be better in most cases unless you took meditative analysis. It's like, okay, this is a thing, I guess. Uh, then we have solar shield, which, yeah, your manifestation now has a shield. Uh, you know, it gives you plus one AC, which, not bad at least, but, you know, it's a free shield. Uh, and it doesn't take up your hand either, which is pretty cool, actually. Uh, however, <laughs> it, you know, it only has five plus twice your level HP and no hardness. Yeah, that's right. Your shield takes full damage. Uh, it can't be broken, but if it's destroyed, you can't manifest a new shield for 10 minutes. Uh, and if the shield vanishes due to losing attunement, uh, it returns with the previous HP. And it regains all lost HP during your daily preparations, or when you rest for at least 10 minutes. Uh, so basically, when you take a shorter long rest, but worded in way more complicated language than necessary. I get, like, Paizo wanted to move away from rest economy and all that, but it would be really nice if you just had short or long rest terminology. Really help here. Uh, but if you're Graviton attuned, you get hardness equal to half your level rounded up. So that is actually a good Graviton ability for once. Because thus far, I feel like Graviton's kind of gotten the short end of the stick, where the other effects just tend to be better, like... I mean, on Nimbus, the fire damage is arguably a lot more useful. Uh, I forgot to say 200%. Uh, but, you know, it's like... I mean, Solar Shot, Graviton is useless. Solar Weapon... It's a complicated slow, but it's there. But then the other one's just, yeah, here's even more damage on the thing that's designed to do damage. Uh, then Nimbus, it's like, oh, you've pushed the guy away rather than do punish damage. Uh, but Photon Attuned then is bad, <laughs> to say the least. So when your solar shield is destroyed... Adjacent enemies must succeed a fortitude save or be dazzled for a round. If they crit fail, then they're blinded for one round. Now, keep in mind, nothing happens if they succeed on the save. So, yeah, that's not going to do much, guys. Especially because they forgot to make Solarian not suck. I mean, ultimately, the shield HP... I mean, it's nice that it scales up as it does, but... It does feel like Solar Shield was kind of just undertuned. Especially, like, it doesn't have any hardness by default. Which feels like a very stupid idea. So, yeah, this is just... You know, it's like... It would be fine if it wasn't, like, it probably needs some amount of hardness. Like, maybe it's half your level and then Graviton makes it your level. Would be a good compromise, maybe. But... Yeah, and also looking at it... uh. This starts with only 7 HP, which is barely more than a buckler has. Yeah, that's... All you get. It's a shield with very low HP. And then... 
Oh my gosh, it's just... Why? Why, Paizo? This probably needs... Like... Maybe... Eight plus twice your level? Uh, maybe some hardness as well, like... Two hardness. Or half level, as I said. And then Graviton adds an additional amount of hardness, perhaps. Or maybe it's like Graviton Attuned adds like three to the hardness or something. But otherwise, like Solar Shield is just kind of... It's there. It's just... It's kind of underpowered right now. Like, I'm sure at late levels it's it might be crazy. But starting out, it's going to be very weak and Photon Attuned. For once, you got shafted. Stellar Rush, then. Uh, so, yeah, two actions to stride twice with plus 10 speed. I mean, it gets you in to... Uh, this will cycle you, though. Uh, so, there is that. Which, for some builds, is going to be kind of annoying. Because now, it's like, oh, you've cycled. Great. But, while Graviton Attuned... Uh, when you finish the stride, enemies in 15 feet must make a fort save or be pulled towards you. Uh, so basically, they're pulled in 15 feet. So it's definitely a cool one. Uh, so I'd say it's actually kind of worth it if you to activate this in Graviton. And I think also cycle abilities, they always trigger the att cha uh, attunement change after. So if you're in Graviton mode... This is actually very useful because you can go from being in Graviton mode over into Photon mode and start whacking for massive damage. Uh, then Photon Attuned. Basically, the squares you leave are uh, basically like have solar energy in them and creatures on each side are concealed from creatures on the other side. So creatures inside the spaces aren't affected. So base, like this one just seems so niche. It's like, so basically you have to like move in front of your allies to give them concealment from your enemies. But then also it makes your allies have to fight through concealment for the other side. And it's just, once again, I feel like Graviton got the better ability because this one is just... It's not that great. Like, unless you're going just before all the enemies, in which case you would could use this and then basically move in front of your allies, give them concealment against the incoming barrage, and then your allies can basically move around the concealment screen and then start shooting but it just feels like this is just so underpowered and i also question they really skipped out on doing like a fire dash really uh and i've also seen apparently there's a feat called sudden charge for i think fighter where you stride multiple times then strike this is definitely a, quite a bit weaker though graviton attuned pulling enemies close to you is definitely worth it though and having the plus 10 movement speed is i guess nice so you can always move in but i'd say that maybe stride once and then strike would be nice uh might be a better option so it's like you stride once with plus 10 move speed then strike but if you graviton attuned then you pull in then strike and maybe photon attuned you damage creatures uh, you move past with fire damage during the move. Uh, but then last but not least, by far, uh, twin weapons. You can manifest a second solar weapon. And you can choose its traits separately, though with the two traits shown, why would you? Uh, you can choose to manifest both in the same action, as long as you have free hand for each. And you can add the Agile and Twin traits to the list of weapons. 
or uh, traits you can add. Uh, and both of these, of course, play into dual wielding. So basically, you get two weapons now. Uh, and they're still D8 weapons. So this does do a lot of shenanigans. Uh, you can give them Agile and Twin to just become a whirlwind of destruction with these. And this definitely feels like far and away the coolest feat out there at first level. Granted, your first two are kind of meh. And Stellar Rush is good if you're in Graviton mode. <laughs> <coughs> but, I mean, on uh, Degradant, this is probably nice as a way to initiate with a Stellar Russian Graviton Attunement mode to then get some Photon Solar Weapon attacks in. But, let me get to second level, so we start with Eclipse Strike. Uh... Which is just an action with a cycle trait. Uh, basically, you make an attack with your solar weapon. Uh, technically, there is this thing called solar shot that you'd use with this, but I don't know why you would ever do that. Uh, on a hit, you create an impressive display. And creatures attempting to target you through the struck target and uh, have a better cover level. So basically, uh, it enhances the cover, I guess? It's kind of a weird one, but... Oh, well. Uh, but then there's one of two effects you get. So if you're Graviton attuned when you use this, till the start of your next turn, whenever you wouldn't have any cover against attack, you get lesser cover against that attack, which is very good. And Photon attuned, if a creature's attack would have cover from the creature you struck, that creature takes a minus one penalty to its attack. So basically, even more penalty for attacking through your target. Uh, this definitely has some uses. It, And I will say, it's probably one of the better ones in this uh, tier. But uh, also, uh, real quickly, Solar Rampart. Dumb prerequisite incoming of any initial revelation, though. This is probably to make sure that uh, you don't just casually get this with the uh, class archetype, or the multi-class archetype, but, ah oh well. Uh, basically, you get heavy armor, and you treat armor of 2 bulk or higher as though it were 1 bulk lighter, so... Basically... I mean, this is honestly kind of baffling, actually, because it's like, wait a second. We have strength as a main stat. And we don't even want to carry a lot of guns. Like, you'll probably carry a pistol, but that's it. Like, all you really need is the armor and a pistol, and you've got strength as a main stat. You're not really going to be running into bulk limits that much. So, that, like, lighter bulk just feels kind of random and tossed in is we don't really need this. It's like, you're not really running into bulk limits that much, so why have that? Uh, and then last, and uh, in this case, certainly least is Shatter Impact. For two actions with the Disharmony trait, you can whack an enemy with your solar weapon, your main thing, and then, all it does is increase the size of the weapon dice by one step. So, basically, it's a d10 attack. And you now have to re-manifest your weapon. So, yeah, basically, all you get is that. And then, if you're Graviton attuned, I mean, they take minus 10 foot penalty to speed, which is on top of the difficult terrain, so basically they're now going to have a really hard time getting away, which not bad, I guess. And then Photon Attuned, 
They take additional persistent fire damage equal to half your level rounded up. So basically, you have a fire dot equal to the extra fire damage you dealt. Because, I mean, that's what photon mode did already, so... I mean, the extra effects aren't bad. It's just you have to shatter your solar weapon to use it, and you have to re-manifest it now. And this is two actions, and it just increases the dice by one step. No extra dice, no extra accuracy. It's just boom. I definitely think this needs a bit more oomph to it. Like... Maybe increase it by two steps to a d12. Or maybe just you add an additional dice of damage. Uh, or maybe add two if you're normally rolling three or four. Uh, maybe also give you a boost to the accuracy. Just so you're more likely to hit with this. Because you do have a hefty penalty. Uh, the attunement benefits I think are fine, but... This definitely feels like a very weak disharmony effect, but, ah, well. Uh, then at fourth level, we have Cosmic Infusion, which, in Photon mode, when you would do fire damage, you can do vitality damage instead. Then in Graviton mode, your solar weapon strikes... Uh, increase the difficult terrain range to 10 feet. So that's actually pretty crazy because that means it takes 20 feet of movement to move two squares. Yeah, that is pretty crazy, actually. Uh, then we have Empowered Nimbus next over here. Uh, basically, whenever you get use Nimbus Surge, you get resistance equal to half your level. So, basically, and then it's like Graviton, it's physical damage, Photon, it's energy damage, uh, or at least elemental damage. So, yeah, this is, once again, what the heck is this? I'm even tempted to say maybe this should be the default effect for Nimbus instead and let it affect ranged attacks. But it's only on melee, so it's like, okay, this is kind of jank. Uh, and Graviton is arguably the better one because most melee attacks are going to be physical for the most part. I mean, of course there will still be energy ones, but it's like, oh, well... Yeah, here's extra damage. Here's extra resistance on a melee attack. When you kind of want this from ranged attacks, especially the energy ones. Uh, but then we also have Plasma Ejection. Uh, so for two actions with the Cycle Trait, uh, you can either do a 10-foot emanation centered on yourself or a 30-foot line with a basic reflex save that deals 3d6 fire damage. Uh, and on a crit fail, it's D8 persistent electricity damage. I do kind of question the fire aspect. Like, I get it's supposed to be specifically plasma, but it feels like... I kind of wish this had a different damage type if you were Graviton or Photon. But as it is, it's like, nah, it's okay. But... For Graviton... A creature failing the save is knocked prone, and Photon, increase the fire damage to D8s. Then level plus two, it just deals one more dice of damage. So it goes from three to four, to five, to six, etc. Uh, then also, reactive strikes at fourth level. So, yeah, opportunity attacks are not default in this system, and I will honestly say that might not be a good thing. Especially because the way this system plays out, ranged combat and stuff is a lot more important, so not having, like, rewards for going into melee 
and punishments for trying to ignore an enemy in melee, it feels like that's a bit more important here. And I'd even say maybe Solarian should just have reactive strike default, like Fighter does, just to kind of help them with messing with ranged attackers, where it's like, oh, you know, if you get up close and personal, well, if someone, you know, uses the manipulator move action... or they make a ranged attack, then you get to reactive strike them. Uh, which I'd probably suggest maybe this should be default. Just because in the context of Starfinder, it makes a lot more sense that a melee default character would have easy ways of punishing people trying to run off. But, oh well. I mean, it's good as a feat. And it's like, fourth level at least, it feels like a lot of these are more interesting, though. I feel like Cosmic Infusion could get, could use a bit more work. Because it's also feeling kind of weird that, like, for the Graviton one, it doesn't let you do void damage when you would do Vitality with Photon Mode. And also, it only affects your Solar Weapon Strikes. Which is just kind of weird. Uh, regardless, at 6th level... Uh, we have Constellation Vortex, which is something. Uh, so basically, you create this aura that has this swirling solar weapon. So it does the same amount of damage as your solar weapon of the same type, I would assume, uh, with a basic reflex save. And you can add, use an action with the Concentrate trait to add another weapon to the Vortex. So you can have up to three. So you start with one weapon, then two, then three, but you only up the damage by one. Not one die, just one damage. Yeah, that is... Once again, we get to this point of one damage is not exciting. Like, really, it's not. And it lasts for one round before shattering, but you can sustain the Vortex for up to a minute. So, uh, yeah, why? So basically, you have to take two actions to add a weapon to the aura and keep it going. That's just great. Also, you can spend an action to end the Vortex early, and it deals an amount of damage equal to your solar weapon, uh, equal to your level with the same type as your solar weapon. Uh, plus one for each additional weapon in the Vortex to all adjacent creatures. So, basically, this is just a... Enemies in five feet are constantly taking damage. And then you can explode it for... Uh, basically six damage, plus one per weapon. Okay. Uh, and then, depending on your... You also can't recreate it for another D4 plus one round, so... Yeah, at a level plus three, you get plus two damage per weapon, but... Oh, well. Uh, the Graviton Attunement increased the damage of the Vortex by two per weapon, so... Uh, while Photon is one fire damage per weapon. Uh, and those both include the first weapon, so... Basically, each additional weapon adds two or three damage, in truth, which is... Or it gets kind of weird. And it's also... Uh, like, plus two damage to the explosion, or, like, plus one or two damage to the explosion. It's, it's just kind of weird. You know, it's a bit jank, but... I mean, it's... It's there. Like, it's a neat idea. I, I like the idea. It's just, I feel like they should probably make adding a weapon part of sustaining it instead. So when you sustain it, you add a weapon, and then you can explode it. And maybe also have the uh, damage of the explosion uh, be a bit higher than the passive damage. And actually thinking about it, 
the explosion is actually pretty weak. At least at first, it's going to be pretty weak because at first you're doing six damage when you should have two dice by now. So that's 2d8, which is on average going to be nine damage. So it's actually less damage to explode it than it is to just let it keep circling. I mean, at 20th, it is going to be more powerful because you're doing 20 damage rather than 48. Which, I mean, it would be 19 damage. Or... Yeah, it'd be 18 damage on average from the D8s, but... Yeah, that... They might want to swap which does the uh, amount of damage, but maybe also buff the explosion damage by a bit more just because right now it feels like it's a bit lackluster where it's like for the longest time it's going to be technically better to just let it keep going than explode it. But, oh well. Or maybe like the... Uh, spinning damage is only at like 5 feet, but then the explosion is like 10 feet, or maybe 15 feet, or something, I don't know. I don't know, it's just a bit odd, I'd say. Uh, then we also have Corona. So it's basically a 10 foot emanation, uh, you can activate as 2 actions, and you have to sustain it for up to a minute, so it's gonna be sustained, which is annoying. Uh, so Photon Mode, you're a light source. Uh, so you just create bright light in the area, and then 10 feet beyond that is dim light. Uh, but invisible creatures in the bright light become concealed, and concealed creatures in the bright light become uh, unconcealed. So basically, it helps reveal people. And then the other one is just stupid. So... It basically makes an area of darkness. But, so it works as the darkness spell. With spell rank equal to half your level, so... At 4th, or at 8th level, it upgrades into the more powerful darkness. But... The ultimate issue with this is kind of stupid, so... At first, if you don't have dark vision, you're blinded. Then, with the upgraded darkness, even that doesn't save you from the darkness. So basically, you're surrounding yourself in darkness. Yeah, that is just beyond stupid. <laughs> Like, th that really needs a, you can see through the darkness. Uh, so you're not affected by this darkness. <laughs> it's just... Why? <laughs> uh... So yeah, that one I also will not run as written. Uh, just for the convenience of, by the way, if you have your Corona active in Graviton mode... You do not blind yourself. <laughs> it's... At least that's a more laughable oversight of, oh, they forgot to let you see. Uh, so then we have the solar uh, Nimbus block for the solar shield. So basically, if you shield block, uh, you can use Nimbus Surge as a free action if it was you shield block a melee attack. I mean, it works. It's simple, but, you know, I mean, it's nice, at least. So it's like, oh, yeah, you still get the Nimbus effect. So probably want it if you're in solar mode, but, I mean, it does kind of balance out the fact that it's like, oh, well, you're either in Graviton mode and have a less fragile shield, or you're in solar mode, 
and you get to damage him back, but... Ah, well. And then we have Solar Barrage. Which even has Disharmony. But you make two Solar Shots with minus two Circumstance Penalty to the attack roll. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. So, you're using a terrible ability... Sure, it's at the same multi-attack penalty, but with a minus two penalty. So, you're taking something that's already inaccurate, making it more inaccurate. And yeah, you get to make two shots at once. Which, you know... I mean, it's nice, but they have to be different targets. So, you have to shoot two different people at once. I mean, yeah, like, no multi-attack penalty. But... Ugh. It's disharmony, too. It's like, ugh. Everything about this is awful. Why? Like, you could make that a plus two bonus. And it would be... I mean, at first it would actually be okay, but then it's like, ah, but it's still solar shot. You know, it's... It would be... I mean, it would still end up being bad, but it's like, okay, well, you know, for Disharmony, it's not bad. I mean, you could make this four Solar Shot attacks for two actions, and it would still be kind of bad, because it's a minus two penalty to something that's already very inaccurate. Yeah. Now, I will say, at the very least, in defense of Solar Barrage... The issue is that it's caring about Solar Shot. In fact, I'll say most of the Solar Shot abilities are actually... Like, they're bad just because Solar Shot is so bad itself. And this one, it definitely makes it like, oh, you know that thing that makes Solar Shot so bad? And one of the most garbage things of all? Besides how pathetic the Graviton range is. Yeah. Here's something that magnifies that problem. Great. Uh, then there's Starbrand. So uh, you can use this action after you've done a solar weapon strike or a successful solar shot. Against all odds, I might add. Uh, but uh, the first benefit is very dumb because like oh you triple the range of your solar shot when targeting a branded creature but to trigger this you have to have been in range in the base range to do that okay I mean I will say this is at least it's not the worst thing in the world if you were to use this in photon mode and then you were to go into graviton mode and like uh, maybe you hypothetically speaking your balance arrangement for some reason and you use their uh, ability and then you got a solar shot attack off in photon mode and then swap to graviton mode now you've branded them you actually have a 45 foot solar shot when targeting that creature which would allow you to continue targeting it with uh the graviton shot so i mean it but that's like the one th time it would be useful Otherwise, it's like, okay, so that would only really matter if the creature moved away. But at the very least, there's a second ability, which an invisible creature affected by the brand, uh, or who later becomes invisible, becomes concealed instead. And if it was concealed, uh, it is no longer concealed. So basically, it does a similar thing to what Corona does in solar mode. But, or yeah, what your Corona would do, but it works in a slightly different way. Uh, 
and it lasts until creature slain. Ten minutes pass, and you mark another creature. Uh, overall, I think this isn't. This is actually not half bad. It's just it has limited utility, especially with the solar shot stuff. Because it would be better if solar shot had range increments. Because then at least, it actually was decently accurate. So it's like if you did it at a longer range, then you would triple the range on the brand and then it's like oh you know like let's say uh you had a solar shot with a 40 foot range increment and you shot someone within 40 to 80 feet of you so like maybe you know they're in 80 feet of you okay you use your solar shot at the minus two penalty you hit then you brand them oh i now have a uh 120 foot range increment on it for the branded target now it's in my normal range for solar shot so i get full accuracy that would be a lot better and more useful but as it is that very niche like really niche like because ultimately it's like it's only going to come up if the enemy runs away from you on their next turn eighth level flicker strike uh, yeah, so basically, you strike with your solar weapon. Uh, two actions with cycle. So strike with your solar weapon. Then choose a creature in range equal to your current speed. Teleport to them, and then make a strike against them. Uh, but if the initial strike fails, you don't teleport at all. Uh, yeah, this is just awesome. <laughs> I'm surprised this isn't three actions, honestly. <laughs> and I'm surprised it doesn't even have a recharge. This is just awesome. Uh, and then Graviton mode, you just double your speed for the range of the teleport. Uh, and then Photon attuned, if either strike is a crit critical success, the target is dazzled. So, yeah, that's... I mean, Photon attuned is kind of meh. It would be nice if maybe it's like on a successful strike it's dazzled. Crit success it's blinded maybe would be a good compromise. But otherwise this is just absurd. Probably the one feature uh, feat that might be overtuned because yeah, casually teleporting with two strikes and two actions. Uh, yeah. Uh, though actually noting something the first attack, the second attack does still take the multi-attack penalty. So there is that. So you want to do this first and go strike one, teleport, then strike two with minus five. Uh, or less if you got agile through the uh, twin solar weapon deal. Uh, which is definitely fun with this, but this is definitely a Pretty crazy feat, because casually getting a teleport at will. Yeah, that's pretty absurd for 8th level. Uh, then there's Mind Warp Shield. So, if you have Solar Shield, uh, while the shield is raised, you get a bonus to will saves. Okay. Uh, and then, with the Shield block, uh, you can actually use it against uh, will save deals, and it also works on energy damage, not just physical. Uh, and another thing to state with shields is that shield block only works on physical damage normally, which not the best in this system, actually, because energy is a lot more common. So I will say they might need to consider changing the shield rules uh or at least like modifying the how shield block works and stuff just to accommodate for the fact that yeah stuff works very differently when energy damage is everywhere like because the shield doesn't work on a laser pistol right now it's like oh yeah it's kind of weird uh might need some changing but At the very least, Mind Warp Shield is actually pretty useful because you get to use Shield Block on uh, will saves and such, so that is good. Uh, momentum, one action uh, after a melee strike. 
So I have to use Solar Weapon, basically. Uh, you can step twice. So, not bad. Uh, and then if you're Graviton attuned, uh, each of those is a 10 foot step rather than 5 feet. So, essentially you shift 2 squares or shift 4 squares with this uh, to use some 4 terms. Uh, then Photon attuned, you leave an after image in the square you moved out of at the beginning of this action, and it lasts till the end of your next turn, or till another creature enters the space, uh, and it counts as an ally for the purposes of flanking. So this is going to lead to some shenanigans, because this does allow you to move into a position where you flank with the reflection, though sadly you only have... Uh, because I do believe with the stepping twice, I think it does let you move diagonally twice uh, without penalty. Because they're two separate steps. So that might mean you might be able to instantly start flanking them and then make an extra attack with a flank bonus. Uh, and if they stay in place, like maybe you have reactive strike to discourage movement, you can then continue attacking them. Also, I like how this Solarian here... Uh, they're showing just casually has a pistol because that's what you actually want to do <laughs> at least with the way it's written right now uh then we have propulsive shield oh boy oh boy so you know how solar shield is very underwhelming and how solar shot is underwhelming or actually solar shot is just way underpowered yeah here's a feat for both of them. Yeah, I don't understand why they did this. It's like, hey, here's two very underpowered things together. Uh, but anyway, what it does is, uh, when you use Solar Shot while the shield's active, you can deal one damage per damage die of your Solar Shot to your Solar Shield, bypassing the hardness, if any. Uh, you increase the Solar Shot's range by 10 feet and uh, basically add damage equal to the damage dealt of a type determined by the attunement. So Graviton, it's bludgeoning damage. Photon, it's solar. Uh, and then if you critically hit, uh, for Graviton, you gain plus two to the trip attempt. And for Photon, the persistent fire damage is now at D8. So... Yeah, uh, you also increase the solar shot's range by 10 feet, so you now have a 25-foot graviton solar shot, which is, I mean, it's better, at least. <laughs> it's marginally more useful, though it's still in easy striding range. At least for most races. Uh, and then photon mode, I mean... It's more damage, at least. Uh, and 40-foot range is actually base pistol range, so there's that, at least. But you have to damage your solar shield, which already has very low HP for a shield. I mean, it has one more health than a buckler. Seriously. That feat is just so pathetic. It's not even funny. Uh, then 10th level, we have Careful Strike. It's a flourish, and literally all it does is if you miss your attack, then you just do damage as if you rolled all ones. Uh, but you do get the usual attunement benefits, which is actually kind of silly, because at most, this is going to let you do, like... Because this does mean most of the... You actually get a lot of damage still, because it's like... 4 plus... That's like 20 damage on a fail at 20th level, which isn't bad, actually. Uh, it is kind of annoying that this is light when a lot of other classes get this type of thing very early. Uh, and you do have to be attuned for it, but... Like, at the very least, it's like, eh, you know, if you're going to strike once, well, you might as well use this one. Uh, it doesn't work with other flourishes as much, though, sadly. Uh, but, I mean, it's nice, I guess. It's there. 
Uh, though it would have been nice if it was added to uh, Solar Shot instead. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Lord knows that needs a uh, effect on a miss badly. Uh, Soul Furnace, meanwhile. Uh, so one action with the healing trait. Uh, it does take concentration, though. Uh, you choose Affliction on yourself, such as a Curse, Disease, or Poison, and then lose HP. Uh, yeah, that's very rare for a healing effect. Uh, equal to the level of the Affliction, and make a new save on it. Uh, and it's once per day per Affliction. Uh, and it's no effect on a fail, and a failure, just a failure on a crit fail. So basically, you're less likely to advance it using this, but... I mean, it's... It's there... It's definitely, like, it's probably the best option, assuming you didn't get twin weapon. Actually, yeah, it is the best option, but... I mean, it's one of those, it's not very, it's not always useful, but when it does come up, it tends to be very good and useful, where it's like, oh yeah, you know, oh, I've got this annoying curse. Okay, I'm going to sacrifice some HP and go for a saving throw. And try and get better. So it is useful at least. It's like it's got a use. Don't get me wrong. But it's kind of like. I mean, Tens level is definitely one of the weaker ones. Because careful strike is like, eh. It's not that exciting. Same with Soul Furnace. Like, it's not that exciting, but it can be useful when it comes up. Twin Guard, then. This is a disarmony effect. Uh, have, you have to have twin weapons. And then. Uh, whenever creature in reach critically hits you with a melee strike so this is very hard to get to trigger because like you have to be critically hit you have to be hit with a melee strike and you have to have two weapons active and it's a reaction with this army great i mean at least you can on your next turn immediately attune and then get back to it but yeah, it's like, oh, well, now you've got one action less on your next turn, I guess. Uh, but you gain resistance to the attack equal to your level. Uh, and you have to re-manifest it to continue using it, so yeah. Uh, I think the rules for manifestation... It's like... Basically... Like, it just comes back whenever you tune, so. Ultimately, I feel like the weapon shattering stuff. I think it's just, like, thematic fluff of, oh, yeah, you know, it explodes. But, like, with this one, it's like, it has disharmony, so it's like it's gone anyway. And then it's immediately going to come back when you reattune. It's... I mean, it is what it is, I guess. 12th level. Covering Flare. Stride twice and use Solar Flare during it. And if somehow you hit, you suppress the target. Ugh. I mean, right now, it's just bad. This could be so much better, but... It's tied to Solar Shot rather than Solar Weapon. Like... I think it'd be nice if it also let you use your solar weapon just so it's like, oh yeah, you run by and strike somebody during it and something like that. But it's, yeah. It's like, it's kind of lackluster, especially with how bad that is right now. Uh, and then we have Wormhole, which is just way better. Uh, but basically you take, create two Wormholes in 100 feet of you. Uh, this is two actions with a cycle trait, by the way. Uh, and they have to be at least 50 feet apart. But if a creature enters the space of a wormhole, uh, they can then move to any space adjacent to the other wormhole. Uh, so basically, you can teleport people with this. It doesn't say it's a teleport, but it basically is. Uh, and maybe it should specify that, yeah, this is teleporting people. Uh, though I think the idea is like you fold space basically so it's like oh you it's like you normally moved through there 
Uh, and you can sustain them up to a minute, uh, once per hour. Uh, but if a creature can't be teleported, then the worm rolls collapse. But then there's one of two things. So for Graviton, a creature that begins its turn adjacent to a wormhole must succeed a fortitude save or be pulled into the wormhole. So you can do some shenanigans with this and casually drop a wormhole off a cliff uh, or in some other dangerous area. And then people can get pulled through and teleported to, the, to their doom. Uh, whereas with Photon Attuned, uh, a creature becomes concealed after it goes through a wormhole. So basically, I actually kind of like this because it plays up the idea that there is this opposite dichotomy. So Graviton wants to be used offensively where you just yoink people through the wormhole. Uh, whereas Photon wants you to use this as a support ability, which is definitely pretty cool. Uh, so it's definitely a unique one. Uh, so you just drop this and teleport people around. And it definitely feels like... I mean, it's basically Vortex Warp in a way from D&D uh, &D 5e in Strixhaven. But I think this is ultimately a lot more balanced because it actually shows up at late level. Uh, and it does have a lot more limitations. But yeah, it's definitely a cool one. Uh, and definitely the one actually worth taking. Because uh, right now, there's really no reason to take Covering Flare. You're just taking Wormhole. And then we get to something just awful. So, first off, we have Stellar Shield Collapse. So this requires Solar Shield. But this also has another... Uh, prerequisite, basically. So, if you haven't used... Uh, so basically, your solar shield's destroyed while you have it raised. Uh, you trigger this. Uh, it's a free action, at least. But it kind of has to be. Uh, but then, you you know, your solar shield collapses, and you if you're in graviton mode, you use black hole. If you're in photon mode, you use supernova. But you have to have that revelation and also have to have not used it in the last 10 minutes. What the hell is this feat? So, for one, if you're balanced arrangement, you can't even use this. You can only use this if you're de degradant or radiant. This also means it's not going to be forwards compatible as... Only those two can use this. And also, this requires you to be in the right mode, so... I mean, yeah, it is the favored mode of those, but... That's still going to leave a bit of a headache, especially for Photon, where... You really want to be in Graviton, because that just absorbs a lot more damage, and it's just better. But... And like this is even assuming you haven't already used them, then you get to use them as a free action. It's when your shield's destroyed, which, yeah, it's very easy to get that destroyed, but for very bad reasons. And yeah, this is just awful. And it definitely feels like this is supposed to be like this was designed in a world where... It was more like 1st edition, and you always had Black Hole and Supernova available to you. So, you always had them. But then it was changed to where this... To this wacky idea of having these stellar arrangements that... I'm not really a fan of. But this would be better if they just had Black Hole and Supernova by default available. And then your other one is Unstable Flare, which requires Solar Barrage, of all frickin' things. It's two actions with Disharmony to make a bunch of solar shots with a minus two penalty. Yeah, it is a 15-foot radius burst, and it does keep them 
current multi-attack penalty, so it's... At least in theory, it's decent, but by this level, you've probably gotten to the point of... Your solar shot just isn't hitting. And depending on your mode, you get to either step once as a free action before or after making the attacks in Graviton mode. But, I mean, you have to shoot this in 15 feet of you, so that's something. Uh, but then Photon Attuned, you're concealed to each target of the attack, so that's actually not bad. It's just uh, Solar Barrage is so bad that it's like, okay, so you have to invest in a terrible feat just to get concealment and then you're doing something that doesn't it's not really worth it because it's like oh yeah make a bunch of solar shots that are all gonna miss probably because it's like they're already inaccurate oh they're even more inaccurate and to boot you're no longer attuned because screw you i guess attuned blow at 16th level finally when you take the attune action you make a solar shot as a free action become reattuned uh, yeah, now the kineticists are laughing at a, at Solarians because they just get that by default. So their deal when they do like the gather elements, they get to make a, uh, like strike with their elemental blast. They just have that by default. This definitely feels like that should be the case here where it's like just... Yeah, like, you strike with Solar Weapon, or theoretically, Solar Shot, and Attune, but... Yeah, that, that should just be baseline. <laughs> then Harmonic Convergence. Whenever you use a Disharmony action, you get temporary hit points equal to half your level, so... Basic... So this is actually pretty decent. Uh, it's just a... Yeah, there's a bit of jank to it, but... Oh, well, like, you know, when you do unattune yourself, oh, you get half your level THP, so 8 H THP, which isn't bad, but it's there. 18th level, homing moat. Uh, yeah, you triple the range of your solar shot. Why the hell is this not the default? Uh, and then when you use it... Uh, in its original range, you ignore concealment and cover. I mean, Photon, you might actually use this if Solar Shot was even good at this level. Uh, whereas with Graviton... Uh, why the heck are you doing this? Uh, but then 18th, there's also Stellar Paragon, fortunately. Uh... Basically, any creature that hits you with an attack gets one of two effects. And this is just automatic. And any attack at any range. Which is definitely pretty crazy and definitely feels like an 18th level thing. Uh, but, Graviton Attuned, they take minus two circumstance penalty to their attacks for the next round after hitting you. They strike you again. Increase the penalty to minus three. Stacking with their multi-attack penalty. Uh, though this should say that it always does that, but oh well. Uh, Photon Attuned then is 3d6 fire damage. So, yeah. That is a pretty crazy ability to have. So anytime you get hit, they take 3d6 fire damage. Pretty crazy. Uh, then 20th level. Cosmic Alignment. You're permanently quickened. Uh, however, you can only use that action to attune, strike with your solar weapon, or, if you're insane right now, make a solar shot. Yeah, that does, it's simple, but it does feel like a 20th level feat. Unlike both of Envoy's 20th level feats. Uh, then, perfectly attuned. Basically, when you become attuned, you can instead become perfectly attuned. And whenever you do anything that would have a different effect based on being Graviton or Photon attuned, you can you choose which one. So, basically, it is the uh, 
balance arrangement ability on steroids, the astrologic sense on steroids, except you don't determine the results before. So astrologic sense is still better for something like uh, solar shot where it does variable damage. But otherwise, this is just better than it in every way. It's just always active, always cool. And that one definitely feels like, yeah, that does feel like a pinnacle of the class where it's like you just casually do anything using either version of attunement. It's a good one, I'd say. Uh, so my summary of the Solarian, this class is just underpowered. It has a lot of cool ideas. It just needs more power. It's, you know, it's like, it's kind of just... You're trying to get in melee, but, and also I'll say, it kind of feels like this was more designed to be used in Pathfinder than Starfinder, like Solar Nimbus. It only works on melee attacks, when ranged attacks are the thing you're really worried about. Solar Shot is, I mean, it's actually even bad in the context of Pathfinder, but at least under the assumption that it was supposed to get the buff from Sol Solarian Crystals, like, if you do that, it's still bad. It's just... Ugh. It's just not good. Right. Yeah, and then ultimately, it's like... They just have so much stuff, like... It's just... Kind of undertuned, and it's just... Now, I will say, ultimately, I think the mechanics are relatively good. It's just, it needs a bit more oomph to it. Like, Solar Nimbus could probably use a constant effect, because currently, it's the only one without a passive effect. But, well, technically, I mean, they all have active. Technically, they are all active stuff, but Solar Shot and... Or like solar flare and solar weapon at least it's like you have an attack option that you get that's technically a weapon uh but nimbus just kind of feels undertuned right now like maybe they could put solar shield in this slot so it's like oh well you just have the solar shield instead maybe or maybe just add some damage reduction for ranged attacks or any like just any passive effect so it's like it's always doing something rather than just oh you got hit by a melee attack do something as a reaction because that's just kind of meh and of course solar shot just it needs a rework like it needs a lot of buffs just i get they don't want solarian to have to be good at range by default but it's this is kind of just so you've made it where they don't even use this a pistol is better than that it's just yeah and ultimately i also think that in the context of starfinder this probably needs 12 plus con hp just because in the context of what it's trying to do it probably needs a bit more durability either that or default to heavy armor but Eh, you know, it, it is what it is. And it's got some feats that could probably be totally replaced, like, uh... Uh, Meditative Analysis. That could easily be changed. It's... Also, I just realized this doesn't have a tuned, nor does it have Graviton or Photon effects. So I didn't know if... I mean, yeah, it, that's a weird one where, like, do, do you tune as part of it or something? I don't know. But that one could probably be cut because it doesn't really do much for them. Uh, a lot of their stuff just needs to be improved. As for the solar arrangements... They're a neat concept, but I think there needs to be some rethinking. 
For example, I think the initial revelation for Degradant and Radiant should be swapped out. Uh, these should be changed into something default, maybe, where you have both abilities by default, and they're your cycle actions, and then... Or maybe they just start with their disharmony actions. So you have a once-per-ten-minute disharmony action, and then each one gets a new cycle action, such as Graviton might have a pull ability that's a single-target pull, whereas Radiant has a Cone Blast Spray of Fire ability, perhaps. Uh, or maybe it's something similar to Binaric Assault that plays into the Solar Weapon or Solar Shot. Like, maybe for, sup uh, for Radiant, they get a like Cone Blast Solar Shot. So you basically do a solar shot against everyone in a 15-foot cone, let's say. Or maybe you make a solar weapon attack against everybody in a 15-foot cone. Uh, and then Graviton, it might be, you know... Maybe you make a solar weapon attack against everyone next to you or something. Uh, and just like... Because I think Black Hole and Supernova would be more interesting if they were default things that you had that were either cycle actions or maybe even disharmony actions. So you start with a disharmony ability. And then also, of course, go the kineticist route and let a tune give you a solar weapon or solar shot, uh, solar flare attack. But yeah, ultimately Solarian, it looks cool. It just needs a lot of buffs. Because this one feels like I question if they ever tested this at all. Especially at higher levels, because it's like... How the hell did Solar Shot get past testing with a 15-foot range max on Graviton and no attack roll scaling? Uh, and actually, before I forget, I should probably mention uh, Show Solarian Crystals uh, and what all they do because they're so important to you. It's... You know, it's like... it. Everything is built around this. So... Uh, basically, you take these Solarian Crystals and you buff yourself with them. So, you have Striking and Potency, which, you know... If you know Star uh, Pathfinder, you know what these do. Uh, so, you get... Plus one, plus two, plus three potency. Uh, and you benefit, can have more orbital crystals. Uh, then also you've got your striking crystals, which starting at level four, you get an additional die. Uh, so you go from two to three to four in the end, 19th. Uh, now it should be noted, however, that with weapon upgrades, uh, or like the upgrading weapons, well, actually, no, you do stop at tracking plus three. Uh, I forgot that. Uh, but it's like, you know, you do get a lot of, like, it's slightly different scaling, but then the orbital crystals are. Kind of weird. Like, fixed point. Once per 10 minutes, as a free action with the concentrate tag, when you critically hit with your solar weapon or solar shot as part of an action with the cycle trait, so not many do this, and this doesn't even work with binary Assault, by the way, uh, you choose whether to change your attunement or not. And that's an orbital crystal. That is so stupid. The Gluon Crystal... Okay, this one's actually kind of stupid, because whenever you hit with it, uh, it does D4 Persistent Bleed. And on a crit, it's Clumsy 1, so it recovers. Uh, and then it becomes D6, D8, D10 in the end, so... That one is actually pretty nasty, but... 
then at a slightly higher level. Which... Hilariously, there's currently no crystals that you can actually use with level 2. It's like, so wait. When you first get weapon potency you don't even you can't even get an orbital crystal that those appear at six uh but then you also have the graviton or photon crystals where the graviton crystal does d6 you do plus d6 damage of uh, physical damage if you're graviton attuned only if you're graviton attuned and on a crit, while you're Graviton tuned, the target must succeed a DC 23 Fortitude save or be slowed for uh, slowed one. Not sure why that's a set DC, but oh well. I don't know the calculation, but that might actually be better than your normal one. But then it's DC 31 and slowed for two rounds. And when you hit an immobilized creature with your solar weapon... Uh, you knock it prone on a fort save. Then the photon crystal, extra fire damage while photon attuned, and on a crit, has to make a fort save or be blinded for a round. Uh, then at 14th, save DC is 31, and it's blinded for two rounds. And damage dealt by your solar weapon and photon Attunement ignores resistance to fire. Could that not be at the base of it? Because that would be nice. Uh, yeah, th these are just so underwhelming. Like, fixed point, why would you ever use that? Glue on, why would you not use that? Also, why would you not go graviton and photon? It's, it's like... Ugh. Especially because, like, normal ones, you can have multiple elemental damage runes, which just do more. And because you can stack them, you can do three extra dice of damage instead. These, it's like, oh, you get d4 persistent bleed, and then d6, depending on attunement. Stellar Blast, meanwhile, at 14th, is an uncommon one, so you gotta ask to get this. Uh... Yeah, they create a small explosion. Also, this is the only one that affects Solar Shot. Uh, and it deals splash damage equal to the number of weapon damage dice. Uh, and you're immune to the splash damage, thankfully. It's not like the stupid... Uh, like, spread guns that they added, which... Uh, do splash damage to you if you point blank with them. And that includes the blunderbuss of all guns, so... Yeah. <laughs> Using the blunderbuss, a shotgun-type weapon at close range, or in melee, will damage you. Uh, but, you know, also, like, obviously, uh, bludging damage and graviton, fire damage and photon. Yeah, Stellar Blast, I question why this is 14th level. Granted, it does give splash damage to a melee, but it's like... So you're pretty much guaranteed to be doing, like, three splash damage. But it's like, I guess, yeah, you do three damage guaranteed, and it's like, it's flat damage buff. But ultimately, it's like, it's just kind of meh. It's like, eh, you know, it's it just seems so underwhelming compared to the basic weapon runes that you have so yeah this probably needs a bit of work too uh this definitely needs to affect solar shot because yeah it's just so jank but yeah ultimately the solarian i mean if it launched as it is, it would just be so awful. It just... It's got a long way to go before it's actually worth playing. Right now, it's... As written, at least. 
this is the worst class in the game by a significant margin. Because Envoy, at least, it functions. It's just very rough around the edges and way underdeveloped in a mechanical sense. Solarian has some great concepts mechanically, but it just sucks in terms of balance and power. It's just, yeah, you're cool conceptually, but they really undertuned this. And it's even worse because this was the class everyone was the most excited about bringing into Pathfinder. And here it is. And it's just pathetic. You've got a backup ranged option that sucks more than anything. It's just... Ugh. Regardless, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, even if it's had to be a bit more negative than I would like. Uh, just due to the nature of the Solarian as it is right now. And how weak they made it. But uh, without further ado, I will see y'all next time. Halo Zoo out.